Hi everybody, Andrea Trowski with Dental Health Tutoring. So what does prosthodontics actually mean? So when we're referring to dental, so we're talking about anything that's going to restore or replace teeth, such as crowns, bridges, dentures, um, implants, I'd say veneers. So anything that's being made in a lab, that's what I tell students of mine to really help them nail down what does prosthodontics really mean and what does it entail. Um, on exams, often they're going to ask you questions like when we're referring to prosthodontics, and that can be very confusing to a lot of people. They can go, well, I know it's a bridge, I know it's a crown, but what does it exactly mean? So just think anything that's made in a lab that's restoring the tooth and or replacing the tooth, okay? So I actually have a screen here that I'm going to share with you guys. I do have a study guide that I give to my students and I'm going to talk about it a little bit with you to really help you understand what exactly it is. Okay, so just a little cheat sheet for me as well to kind of remember what I'm talking about. So let's talk about there's different types. Okay, so there's different types. You are going to have fixed and removable um, uh, prosthodontics. So the fixed ones are ones that you cannot remove. So you can't just take off a bridge and say, okay, here you go. I'm going to put it on my nightstand. Okay. You can't just take off a crown and put it on your nightstand. But when you're talking about dentures, that's going to be a removable one, either fixed dentures or sorry, either partial dentures, full dentures or over dentures. So let me just read that little bit to you here. So talking about dentures, they are removable because you are able to remove them. But having that said, there are other types of dentures that would go over top of an implant. So implants are screwed into the bone and there are certain types of dentures that attach onto that. So they're not meant to be removable. Okay. But right now we're talking about removable ones. So complete dentures are complete dentures because they replace all the teeth. Even if one tooth is still present in the mouth, you cannot call it a complete denture. Partial dentures are the ones that replace certain teeth, but not all of them. So if somebody has, let's just say five teeth missing on this side, they have a denture that they kind of clasp in to replace those missing teeth. Or even if it's just one or two teeth, it's partial it comes out that's considered a partial denture. Now over dentures, they are going to fit over remaining natural teeth or implants. So these can be more stable than traditional complete dentures because if there's not enough bone support to really help that patient keep those dentures in for a complete denture, they they can just pop out. They can they can literally just come out. You know, you know how in movies you often see like, haha, my grandma's denture just kind of came out when she was eating. Well, that's not a good thing. It means there's not enough bone support. But over dentures is what I was talking about before, how it can fit over dental implants. Okay. So, and the fixed ones are like crowns, bridges, veneers. Those are the best examples because they are fixed. And I do have some images for you guys in a second too. So then when we're talking about implants here, so implants are something that screws into the bone. I do have another video all about dental implants if you want to check that out on my YouTube channel, but it basically screws into the bone, but you need to have enough bone support in order for your bone to hold that screw. I am all for implants. They are amazing because it's just dealing with that one tooth that you need replaced. So if if you have lost a tooth or you need to remove that tooth because of a deep cavity, um, you don't want the root canal or the tooth um, came out because of an accident, then a dental implant is usually the way to go, okay? Um, now, what I want you guys to consider too is that how does all of this come into play? So how do we know you might need a crown, a bridge, a denture, a veneer? It really depends on what it's for. So in a nutshell, a dental crown is to make that tooth stronger. If there's a big cavity, sometimes a filling just simply isn't enough. We need a crown to cover the entire tooth. Now, what if we tell you a bridge is recommended? This is because you have one or two teeth or more missing that we're trying to replace for you. And a dental bridge goes over the whole area there and it's going to attach 
to those other remaining teeth on the other side. A dental implant replaces a missing tooth as well, but you don't have to worry about the other teeth on the other side and shaving those down like a bridge. A dental implant, that's why I like them so much because it just screws into that one spot. It looks and feels the most like your natural tooth. Now, what about a veneer? So this is cosmetic. It's a very thin, like fingernail thickness veneer that goes over a tooth, but you still have to shave down your natural tooth to be able to fit that veneer over top, which is cemented on. Veneers are done if somebody doesn't like the look of their tooth. There's a lot of staining. A lot of people think veneers are done because of crowding and it makes the teeth straight. That's not the case. It has nothing to do with the alignment of the teeth. It's more so stain. I don't recommend veneers personally because you still have to shave down a lot of the tooth. And if the veneer pops off, well, you have to put it on again, but you have to keep shaving down a little more tooth to put it back on so it has something to cement onto. I personally don't recommend veneers, okay? So feel free to comment below if you have any questions about that, and I'm happy to explain. Now, in this document here, I talk a little bit about how we prepare the mouth for all of this. How do we prepare the mouth for a crown, a bridge, anything, dentures? How do we make it customized for your mouth? We take impressions, okay? So there's different types of impressions. There's alginate impressions and there's final impressions. We take impressions of the mouth. This can often take one or two or three appointments, typically two appointments or three or, or even more um, depending on what types of impressions we're taking because they have to fit perfectly for, for your mouth because not all mouths and teeth are the same. Now, there's different dental materials involved. This is where the dentist is in constant communication with the lab tech to see what is the most recommended. And there's always kind of like, like a medical prescription, like if you're getting antibiotics or you're being prescribed medicine, we have lab scripts. So the dentist will say kind of what they want from this impression, what they want the lab to construct, and then the lab does it for us. Often they will call the dentist back and say, I have a question about this and this um, on the impression this isn't quite clear or I need you to take another impression because this isn't clear I can make the crown I can make the bridge or whatever it is but it's not going to fit properly because I can tell this impression just needs to be redone because something happened to it so that does happen now when we're talking about patients to all of this um, like talking about them, how it's going to work, how we explain all of this, like crowns, bridges, uh, dentures, whatever they're getting done. And we're not only just talking about the cost, but how it's all going to work, how many appointments it's going to take. And then after they get it placed, then we need to tell them how to take care of it. Is it a denture that they can take out every night? Or is it a denture that stays in place? Is it a bridge where they have to learn how to clean under the bridge? Or is it an implant where you don't have to worry about it because it looks and feels most like your natural tooth? You are okay to brush, water pick, everything like normal because you don't have to take it out or clean like underneath it. It's the same as your natural tooth. But as an example, if you've never had a denture before, you're going to be confused on how to clean it. What's the right way? What's the wrong way? You don't want to damage your denture. Do you take it out every night? Do you take your denture out when you're eating? You know, we teach you guys all of that because we know it's a lot and you wouldn't know. So do you guys want to go over some questions here? Actually, I just have a little picture as well. Can I zoom in a little more? I don't think so. I think I zoomed in all that I possibly could. This is on my Instagram page as well. Definitely follow me dental L on Instagram, and then you will see this larger, but this is an example of a crown that fits over top here. I can make this a bit bigger. Actually, no, I can't. Sorry. I tried that. It didn't work. This is a crown that goes over top. This is showing an implant. This is just showing a couple different things like partial dentures, um, things like that. This is showing a complete set of dentures, top and bottom. This is just showing a lab tech kind of looking at how they're putting something together. This is showing a full on bridge that goes right over top. All of these teeth are prepped. This is a partial denture. These are veneers and these are a bunch of different bridges. Okay. Now, do you guys want to go over some questions? How much do you know about crowns, bridges, labs, all of this fun stuff? Okay. So I'm just going to pick one here. I'm looking at my notes and let's see 
what you guys think. Okay. Let's do this one here. So a patient presents with a missing first molar and no adjacent teeth, which is the best treatment option to replace the missing tooth. So remember how we talked about bridges, crowns, dentures, veneers, what would you use to replace a missing tooth? Okay. Is it going to be, uh, sorry. Okay. Is it going to be a removable partial denture? Is it going to be a three unit fixed bridge? Is it going to be a complete denture or is it going to be an implant supported crown? What do you guys think? Feel free to pause the video if you don't want to hear the answer right away. So the answer is an implant supported crown. So honestly, an implant supported crown just means an implant because anytime you're, you're putting on an implant or the dentist is preparing the implant for the patient, a crown goes over top. Like that's just part of it. Okay. But in some textbooks, they refer to it as an implant supported denture. So why is this the best option? Okay. Why is a, is a complete denture, not the right option or a three unit fixed bridge or a removable partial denture. Okay. So an implant is the best option because you don't have to worry about any other teeth. And in this case, they don't have any other adjacent teeth. Remember? So let me just show you that question again. Sorry, I was picking up a couple images. So let me just share my screen. So this is the question that I just um, was asking everybody. So a patient presents with a missing first molar and no adjacent teeth, which is the best treatment option to replace the missing tooth? And the best answer is a implant supported crown. So you wouldn't do a partial denture because that's never the best option in my opinion, okay? A partial denture is never the best option. Always try something else unless for some reason the patient doesn't want a bridge or an implant or there's just simply too many teeth missing, okay? A denture is more for if there's so many teeth missing and they don't want to do 10 or sorry, 10 bridges or 10 implants, okay? If there's a missing tooth, an implant or bridge or denture are the way to go. So in this case, the implant supported crown, which, which just means an implant is the best answer because it says there's no adjacent teeth. You need, you need teeth beside the missing tooth in order to place a bridge because the bridge needs something to go over. So a bridge would not be the, the best answer there. It would not be a partial denture and it would not be a complete denture because a complete denture means all of the teeth have to be missing. Okay. Would you guys like to go over one more? Okay, so let's do the next one. So a patient complains of sore spots under the new complete denture. What is the most likely cause? Um, I guess I can show you guys the question, sorry, here you go. Um, what is the most likely cause? Is it excessive saliva? Is it incorrect occlusion? Is it bone resorption or lack of oral hygiene? So the key words here are sore spots under a new complete denture. This can happen. Is it because of too much saliva, incorrect occlusion, bone resorption, or lack of oral hygiene? What do you guys think? Okay, so if you don't want to hear the answer, pause the video. So the answer is going to be incorrect occlusion. Excessive saliva wouldn't cause sore spots, okay? In fact, excessive saliva is actually a good thing. The issue arises if there's not enough saliva, the mouth becomes dry and sore. Um, bone resorption isn't correct either because that's more of a long-term issue. Bone resorption means the denture wouldn't be fitting properly, but it wouldn't really cause sore spots. Lack of oral hygiene isn't correct either because lack of oral hygiene doesn't correct, or sorry, doesn't cause sore spots. Lack of oral hygiene, meaning like if they're not brushing their denture or brushing inside their mouth could cause red bleeding, um, like mouth. It could cause red bleeding gums. It could cause irritation, but sore spots is if something's rubbing up against something and incorrect occlusion means the bite wasn't adjusted properly. So the denture needs to be adjusted. So how did you guys do with that? So there's actually 20 mock exam practice questions in this study guide. 
This is available for all of my board exam prep academy members if this is something you want. Um, being a board exam prep academy member, you have either the study guide package, the express package, or the VIP package. So this study guide is in all of those packages. It just depends on which board exam prep course you want to be a part of. So definitely check it out at dentalel.com. You will see everything there and let me know if any questions you can sign up for board exam help anytime if you are a student of course and you are taking the board exam maybe you're a patient watching this and you just wanted to learn about crowns bridges all of that stuff i am i hope this helped you maybe you're a student just starting your dental assisting program or dental hygiene program i hope this helped you too so comment below let me know click like if you like this video and i can do more like this absolutely no problem so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one